did was we processed the images together and we put two images into one blank screen and here are two different images of the Archimedes manuscript. If you process the same two images in a different way you can actually get rid of the prayer book text and this is terribly important because the diagrams in the, in the manuscript. For the first time in over 2,000 years, a machine once thought to exist only in myth has been rebuilt. Not by archaeologists, not by engineers, not even by historians, but by quantum AI. And what it recreated wasn't a statue, or a temple, or a set of lost scrolls. It was something far stranger. A device described in the lost manuscripts of Archimedes that could predict eclipses, track the movement of planets, and calculate celestial patterns with a precision that modern computers can confirm even today. What quantum AI discovered may force us to rewrite the entire history of technology, because this device, first imagined by a man who died before Christ was born, might be the world's first computer, forged in bronze and powered entirely by mathematics. Most of us know Archimedes as the Greek mathematician who jumped from his bathtub shouting, Eureka! But that story barely scratches the surface. In his lifetime, Archimedes was revered as the greatest engineer who ever lived. He designed war machines that could lift ships from the sea, mirrors that could burn enemy fleets, and mechanical systems that turn mathematics into physical force. But now, thanks to quantum AI, we're beginning to see just how advanced his mind really was. The AI didn't guess what this device looked like. It wasn't simply reconstructing a broken artifact. It analyzed thousands of fragments, ancient Greek manuscripts, Roman commentaries, astronomical tables, and physical limits of Bronze Age metallurgy. Then it simulated millions of possible combinations, gear by gear, tooth by tooth, until a complete functional model emerged. And what it produced stunned every researcher who saw it, not just because it worked, but because it worked perfectly. When the AI's design was tested in modern simulation software, the results were staggering. Every gear ratio matched the orbital cycles of known planets. Every predicted eclipse aligned with records from ancient Greek astronomers. Even the motion of the moon, with its complex 18-year sorrow cycle, matched within seconds of accuracy. This wasn't ancient art. It was ancient engineering on a level we didn't think humanity could reach for another 14 centuries. Archimedes wasn't just a mathematician. He was a systems thinker. He was building machines that wouldn't be reinvented until the Renaissance. Concepts like differential gearing, analog calculation, and predictive modeling, all expressed through the precision of hand-forged bronze. For centuries, historians assumed the Antikythera mechanism, found in a shipwreck off Greece, was an isolated miracle, a one-of-a-kind fluke. But quantum AI now suggests that Archimedes had already invented the underlying science long before. That device wasn't unique. It was a descendant, a continuation of knowledge that began in the mind of one man. But here's where the story becomes truly mind-bending. When quantum AI began analyzing the Archimedes palimpsest, a thousand-year-old prayer book that once contained his original writings, it detected patterns invisible to the human eye. Scholars had already used X-ray imaging to uncover some of Archimedes's erased text, revealing lost treatises on mathematics and geometry. But in the margins of the manuscript, there were strange faint markings, lines, arcs, tiny notches that no one could decipher. Historians dismissed them as accidental scratches from the scribe, but quantum AI didn't see random scratches. It saw blueprints. Using quantum pattern recognition, the AI reconstructed the faded lines into mechanical geometry, interlocking cogs, rings, and rotation systems. It realized those faint marks weren't meaningless. They were fragments of the very device Archimedes had described. For the first time, we had proof that the mysterious sphere of Archimedes described by Cicero wasn't myth. It was real, and the designs for it had been hiding literally erased beneath the pages of a prayer book for nearly 2,000 years. To verify the theory, researchers instructed the AI to cross-reference those designs with historical sources. Cicero's description of the bronze sphere that mirrored the heavens, the technical writings of Pappas of Alexandria, and the mechanical ratios preserved in the Antikythera mechanism. The result was astonishing. Every ratio, every planetary alignment, every rotational formula matched. It meant one thing, the Antikythera device, the so-called world's first computer, 
was built using Archimedes' original principles, perfected a century and a half earlier. We're not talking about coincidence. We're talking about a legacy of mechanical computing that stretched across generations. An entire forgotten branch of science that vanished when Rome conquered Greece. But the AI found something else, something even more shocking. It realized the device's purpose wasn't purely scientific. It had strategic value, a hidden function that transformed it from a planetarium into a weapon of psychological warfare. You see, in the ancient world, eclipses were not just natural events. They were messages from the gods. A solar eclipse could send entire armies fleeing in terror. A lunar eclipse could be read as divine punishment. Archimedes knew this, and during the siege of Syracuse, he had the power to predict them. Imagine you're a Roman general preparing to storm a city. Suddenly, as your army marches toward the walls, the sun goes dark. Panic spreads. Soldiers drop their weapons. Priests declare an omen of death. Meanwhile, Archimedes, inside the city, knew it was coming all along. That wasn't magic. That was mathematical warfare. The ability to manipulate fear using knowledge of the heavens, to turn superstition into strategy. Think about what that means in modern terms. NASA's computers use mathematical models to predict satellite trajectories and lunar cycles. Archimedes was doing the same thing 2,000 years earlier, using bronze gears instead of processors. The logic is identical. Calculate orbital motion, predict future events, control outcomes. He was using computation as power, information as a weapon. In a world ruled by myth, Archimedes was the only man who understood that knowledge was technology. No wonder it took Rome three years to capture Syracuse. They weren't fighting just soldiers and fortifications. They were fighting a man who could outthink time itself. And here's the eerie part something the AI team couldn't ignore. When they ran the final simulations, the machine didn't just predict eclipses. It synchronized perfectly with celestial cycles still used in modern astronomy software. That means Archimedes' understanding of planetary motion wasn't symbolic, it was quantitative. He had built, in pure mechanical form, a functioning model of the solar system that matched modern equations within a margin of error smaller than 1%. It's as if he had looked up at the night sky seen the same mathematics we use to launch rockets, and turned it into bronze. The AI's reconstruction doesn't just revive a lost artifact, it revives a lost mindset, a way of thinking that merged science, philosophy, and engineering into a single pursuit. Archimedes wasn't just writing about numbers, he was encoding the universe into machinery. And that's what quantum AI has brought back to life, a conversation between two geniuses separated by millennia, one who wrote his ideas on parchment, another who reads the universe in cubits. It's almost poetic that artificial intelligence, our newest creation, has become the translator for our oldest genius. But this is only the beginning, because when the AI looked deeper into the reconstructed designs, it found something hidden. Functions that Cicero never mentioned, mechanisms that no known source describes, features that hint Archimedes' machine might have done far more than model the heavens. We'll explore what those hidden gears actually did, and how they may have turned this planetarium into the world's first navigation and calendar system, a kind of ancient GPS built from starlight. We'll also uncover the chilling reason the Romans might have silenced this technology forever, because this story is just beginning. When Quantum AI finished reconstructing the device, the researchers expected a planetarium, something educational, symbolic, maybe ceremonial. What they didn't expect was data. Because as the AI analyzed the inner gearing, it noticed something that didn't fit the astronomy models, ratios and mechanisms that had nothing to do with eclipses or planetary motion, patterns that aligned instead with something far more practical, navigation. At first, the team dismissed it as an error, but then the numbers started matching something extraordinary the heliacal risings of constellations, seasonal star charts, and tidal cycles across the Mediterranean. These weren't ornamental calculations, they were travel instructions. Archimedes' reconstructed machine wasn't just a planetarium, it was a celestial computer, a portable analog system capable of forecasting the positions of the stars, the phases of the moon, and the seasonal winds. The AI realized that if you turn the device to a given date, it could show when specific constellations, like Sirius or the Pleiades, 
would rise or set on the horizon. That information alone could guide ancient sailors across thousands of miles of open sea. It meant Archimedes had essentially built a mechanical GPS 2,000 years before satellites existed. For context, ancient mariners navigated by watching the sky. The rising of Sirius marked the flooding of the Nile. The reappearance of Orion told Greek sailors when it was safe to cross the Aegean, but they had no precise tools to predict those moments. Archimedes did. Using his machine, sailors could calculate when those stars would appear months in advance, plan routes accordingly, and even estimate longitude by comparing lunar motion to local time. It was, in every sense, a navigational computer, one that could have revolutionized trade, exploration, and empire itself. When the AI modeled the device's full operation, another function revealed itself, a built-in calendar system far more accurate than any Roman standard of the time. It tracked not only lunar months, but also the precession of the equinoxes and solar year drift. In short, it could tell time more precisely than anything else on Earth for over a thousand years. The implications are staggering, because the same principles powering NASA's orbital models today, tracking position and time through celestial mechanics, are the ones Archimedes encoded into bronze around 200 BC. We didn't invent this. We rediscovered it. And that leads to one of the most disturbing realizations in modern history, technological amnesia. We like to believe that human progress is a straight line, each century smarter, each generation more advanced. But Archimedes' machine proves the opposite. Technology can leap forward and then vanish completely. Think about it. Archimedes built an analog computer in the third century BC. Then for the next 1400 years, the world forgot how to make gears that precise forgot the mathematics to model planetary motion, forgot the craftsmanship to cut bronze teeth within fractions of a millimeter. For over a millennium, humanity lost an entire branch of engineering. The AI team called it civilizational short-term memory, a pattern where brilliance flashes, then disappears, leaving only fragments for the future to rediscover. And the terrifying question is, why? How does a civilization that can build analog computers, hydraulic clocks, and steam engines suddenly forget? History might hold the answer, because we know exactly what happened to Archimedes' world. When the Romans captured Syracuse in 212 BC, Archimedes was killed. Legend says by a soldier who didn't recognize him. Rome seized his machines and manuscripts. They paraded them as trophies through the streets, and then they vanished. Not one mechanical text survived. Not one model was reproduced. The most powerful empire on Earth had acquired the most advanced technology of its time and chose to bury it. Why? Some historians argue that the Romans, for all their engineering skill, had no interest in theoretical science. They built aqueducts, not computers. To them, Archimedes' machine was entertainment, a curiosity from a conquered culture. But others believe the truth is far darker. If you controlled an empire built on superstition and faith in divine signs, what happens when someone can predict those signs? When a device can forecast eclipses that your priests interpret as the will of the gods? Knowledge like that doesn't just empower, it undermines authority. Archimedes' planetarium could have destabilized Rome's entire belief system. And perhaps that's why it was silenced. The Roman general, Marcus Claudius Marcellus, reportedly ordered Archimedes' creations taken intact to Rome. They were displayed in temples, then vanished from record. No scholar ever described them again. It's as if the machines were deliberately erased from history. Some believe they were destroyed in the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Others think they were locked away, forgotten in private collections. Either way, the result was the same. The technology disappeared, and with it, the memory that such machines were even possible. Fast forward 2,000 years. Now, through the lens of quantum AI, that silence has been broken. What took Archimedes a lifetime to calculate? AI solved in hours, rebuilding in digital form the genius once buried under centuries of dust and dogma. But what's truly haunting is how similar their goals were. Archimedes used mathematics to model the cosmos. Quantum A, I uses mathematics to model information itself. Both bridge the gap between thought and reality, between the abstract and the mechanical. When you see the gears of Archimedes' computer turning in simulation, you're watching the Bronze Age's version of a neural network, each wheel a node, 
each rotation a computation. It's the same idea that drives AI today. Take vast, complex data and make it predictable. The discovery also reframes how we view the Renaissance. The so-called birth of science might actually have been a rebirth, the slow rediscovery of ideas first realized in Greece and lost through conquest. Even Leonardo da Vinci's gear-driven inventions look strangely familiar once you've seen Archimedes' schematics. It's as though history itself runs in cycles, just like the gears Archimedes built. And here's the part that sends chills down every researcher's spine. If one device could vanish for 2,000 years, what else have we forgotten? Ancient texts mention mechanical birds that could fly, statues that moved by steam pressure, and automated doors that opened when temple fires were lit. For centuries, scholars dismissed them as myths. Now, no one is so sure. Quantum AI has already begun scanning surviving manuscripts for similar patterns. Scratches, diagrams, mathematical notations that might hide more blueprints. Each fragment is a potential key to another lost machine. And the deeper it looks, the more it finds. This isn't just archeology span anymore, it's resurrection. We are literally reviving forgotten genius through computation. When Archimedes said, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth, he wasn't being poetic. He was describing leverage, the idea that knowledge amplifies power. Today, our place to stand is digital. Our lever is quantum AI, and together, they're moving history itself. But there's a warning buried inside this triumph, because if such brilliance could vanish once, it could vanish again. Civilizations fall, libraries burn, data can be wiped with a single pulse of electricity. The Archimedes reconstruction is more than a historical curiosity. It's a reminder of how fragile progress truly is. Quantum A, I may be our insurance policy against forgetting ourselves. By digitizing, simulating, and preserving knowledge that once vanished into ash, it's ensuring that this time, the light of discovery stays lit. Because what Archimedes built from bronze, we are now rebuilding from code. And somewhere in that intersection between ancient hands and modern algorithms lies the story of who we really are, creatures obsessed with understanding the universe. One gear, one equation, one quantum bit at a time. If this discovery shook you, imagine what happens when AI reconstructs the next one. The steam engines of Hero, the automata of Alexandria, the lost mechanical wonders of the ancient world waiting quietly in forgotten texts. Because this isn't just a story about the past, it's about the future of remembering, and the machines, both ancient and quantum, that make it possible.